Hey, how's it going guys? I'm here to talk about the difference between the two extruder heads by uh, Lowsbot. This is going to be the, basically the Taz 4 version or the Budas Nozzle, I think it's pronounced. I don't know. Um, basically with wooden parts and different accessories and whatnot. And the new one that I just received today, which is the uh, Hexagon extruder tool assembly. Um, version 2, I guess they consider it. Uh, Mainly, as you can see, the biggest difference is this piece all here is uh, metal, and this one is a different set of assemblies. Basically, I've, for the most part, these two parts are the same. The only real difference I want to point out, the reason why I'm making the video is so that actually you get a more in-depth uh, on what these look like on the inside. So I'll be disassembling both of them. But, uh, put the extruder head aside, and this aside. Right now, this is the carriage. Obviously, they both come with a carriage. Uh, this one's a little different. This one has the mounts, or uh, the nuts actually inserted. And they come like this from Lulzbot. It allows for the uh, fans to attach. And I'll actually show you what I did with that. Thanks to the guys from uh, Adafruit who showed you, uh, showed up, had a video on uh, how to set it up to give some better cooling with two fans. Basically, if I get this right, push this backwards. This allows you to do is attach this piece, as you can see right here, with the two uh, nuts right here, and then this side would also attach. Now, of course, you have to purchase the nuts themselves. I believe are three M, if I'm not mistaken, um, to attach it. But it would sit like this, allowing you to cool off the. Uh, the hot end right here, this piece right here, which is a mixture of things, you can see it's detaching it. This is wood, the brown pieces are of course are wood, this is wood as well. Now this piece, as you can see, it's, it's actually a set of fins on a, um, when I say Delrin, okay. if I'm mistaken, I apologize, I'll put the post and uh, correct that. But um. Basically, these fins cool off here, which allows the, the filament to go through, which is a 3.0 millimeter. And then the filament would get forced into here and heat up. The issue that I had with this is that since it's a chamber and it's not the exact fit, it builds up the filament here first and then eventually starts to extrude. Well, my issue I had with this one is that for whatever reason, it built up to the point where it jammed, so I had to, I had to actually disassemble it to get it apart to be able to get access on the inside. And uh, it was just a little pain in the ass to get it apart. Like this right here, you can't take apart. You can, but it, I'm assuming that they, they use some serious uh, thread lock because I use vice grips, I used everything. So I take it apart and it was just not coming apart. It would give me like a quarter of a twist and then just stop. And uh, before I broke it, I decided I'd just leave it alone. Uh, one of the parts I do have to replace, if I plan on using this one again, which hopefully I don't, as long as the all-metal one works, is uh, this wooden piece that they do sell separately. But um, I have to look into seeing how to separate this. Because right here, if you can see it very well, but right there, there's actually uh, threads. And this plastic piece threads onto. I tried taking it apart, and it, it was just a royal mission. So that's basically, as you can see, it's multiple components adding this together. So the next thing is uh, to talk about the all metal stuff. So I'm going to put this aside. Alright, this is the uh, all metal one. Put this aside. Keep disassembling it. This is uh, three millimeters. This is what holds this part in. The first thing I take apart is actually the fan to allow me access to get to the second screw, which is uh, on the inside right here. It might be hard to see. I don't have the flashlight on it, but uh, you, can, you have access to one of them, but you don't have access to the other. So you take it apart, and then you actually see the difference between the carriages. So I know you're probably going, well, "What the hell? How, how are the carriages different?" But I'll show you right now. This all comes assembled when you purchase it, so it's not like I had to assemble it. It's already set up this way. I'm disassembling it so I can show you the rest of the stuff. 
in the background. I don't know if you've been hearing the noise. I apologize if you do. It's the uh, it's actually a Type A uh, machine, Series One, 2014. I had it printing something that I needed to print, so that's the noise in the background. Hopefully you can hear it, but I really don't know if you can. Alright. You can see it had this fan obviously on the side. Right here. Where these are already assembled. As you can see on this side it doesn't have the option to put extra fans like the uh, original carriage did. Okay. Flip this over. And now let me get to this. See, well, obviously this is 2.5 to take the fan apart. Now my next step is to take apart the um, actual mounts of the extruder itself, which should be, like I said, it's connected to the carriage with just these two bolts. It's nothing extra, unless they changed it from the previous one, which they should have. Just seems like an easier assembly too, as far as cleaning and taking down. Hopefully I don't have to strip it apart like I did with the other one. There's a royal pain, but we'll see. For those of you that were probably wondering, well, why do you get the lows while they're such a, if it was such a pain in the beginning, it's uh, it's actually the options that it has. Since it has a heated bed, and that was a huge plus for me. Um, it also had the ability to go with two extruders on dual head, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, one thing that I know they don't sell yet is just the uh, hexagon extruder, which would be nice because I have most of the parts. Like I said, I have all this assembly from the um, the old system. I would like to be able to just transition this over for a uh, dual uh, extruder system instead of having to purchase this entire system, which goes for, uh, I think it's 175. Yeah, it's 175. So instead of spending that kind of money, just getting the extruder itself and then attaching it to this and then printing out the dual uh, frame would be nice. Let me save some kind of money. Um, all right, so as of right now, it comes with some filament in, inside of it. So I'm trying to just keep this all together because I'm really not trying to disassemble this completely. I don't see any point in it. Seeing, how, I'm just trying to show you a quick uh, view. All right, this right here is a little fan that's gonna cool off these fans right here that are all metal. And this entire unit, other than this, which is pretty neat. This is obviously the, uh, the mount to attach this to the actual carriage itself so it cools off these fins that's all metal and this all appears to be connected now I see it looks uh, I'm not too sure it looks some kind of cement type of uh, material in between that's it's like purple in color um, that keeps this all held together but other than that what I see here is uh, brass on the inside that looks like that's what goes down in size and then it allows the filament to go through as opposed to the plastic like I said which is this piece right here so I don't see much of a chamber reaction which is great because you're not going to have to deal with the headache that this provided because I don't have you know different materials yeah you do have you know different materials but you don't have plastic wood metal you have metal on top of metal you know so that just seems a whole lot nicer having to break all this apart See this little set screw right here is probably what allows you to just take this part off if it's needed. And then you got the hot end right here. So that's pretty neat. Let's see. Oh, and on top of that, the way that this is held in, instead of it being tape, which I don't think, uh, no, that's not done with uh, the original, which is tape. Didn't notice that on the Type A machine, but not on this one. Um, you can see the. The part that heats everything up is held in basically with the hard plastic and uh, the way that it was uh, soldered on seems to do a pretty good job i've had an issue with that but i know some of the guys are talking about the resistors uh, blowing or whatever having to be replaced hopefully that's not the issue with this but it's all in one area and then it has one plate it's a metal plate with a little screw in it that allows it to hold into one side as opposed to being, you know, extra side, uh, extra uh, mounts on both sides. And you can see the wires come down one side, and then you have the heated element right here, and a set screw to keep it in place as well. So it looks very well supported. The wiring seems to be really good. It looks nice and clean and tidy. 
Alright, so I'm going back to the carriage because I know I jumped around. Apologies. In the first carriage, so let's see the comparison. Alright, so if you wanted to switch over the carriage and say, okay, well, I want two fans anyways. Well, I thought the same thing. Uh, surprise, surprise, no, it's not going to happen. Only because, as you can see right here, there's a difference in size. And you think, okay, well, the fans probably still sit there. No. When you try mounting the piece up, it actually is going to have to sit here. When it sits here, the hole that would mount onto that side, if I can get it real quick, that would mount onto that side, is actually not going to be held onto anything. So, can you print something? Oh, my apologies. We're talking about the original one. The original one, yes, will sit. But the difference, the reason why you can't switch over is because as you can see here, this is being held on to a bit of a change. You see, they ended up printing extra material right here to allow this to be screwed on, which is pretty neat if you think about it. Um, that it's not recessed like the original one was. See, it's all one plate doesn't have the screws like I said so you can't just put fans on this one because it's not gonna sit don't think you're gonna need the fans seeing how they have this and it's a different system altogether so I'm definitely gonna try it on PLA ABS and all the other materials that I have but um yeah like I said the most important part about this video was this now is there a really big draft is there a drastic difference in this no other than actually you know more wires for the little fan but there is a video on uh, YouTube done by, I'll actually link into the video, I'll link into it. This video is pretty thorough on how to set it up as far as installing the wires. And uh, mind you, you have to um, put the software into it for the update on the temperatures you can get. Because yeah, on top of that, this could get a, a whole lot higher, hotter than uh, the original one. Temperature difference. I don't have I don't have it available right now. I don't have the uh, specifications on here. It's showing uh, did not go above 240 Celsius. That's what it's stating for the uh, all wooden one, which of course is the one I'm replacing, which is this one. This one, the specifications, it says. Oh, it doesn't say anything on specifications. Um, heating up to uh, this tool head is capable of heating up to 300 degrees Celsius or 572 Fahrenheit, which is the same thing. It's just obviously different. Uh, there you go. So it's a difference. All right, take care and enjoy quick uh, insight on obviously what the difference were. I think uh, what helps is knowing that you're not purchasing something that's the same as the original, just that it's all metal. It's, no, it has, doesn't have the chamber, you know, it's gonna create the headache. And I also will make a quick video on extruding the material out of this one to see how fast it changes over. Because the other one, like I said, the all wooden, the, the budash nozzle, or <laughs> how you pronounce it, uh, it took quite a quite a while to empty out this chamber and have uh, the the true color come out of whatever the filament is that you're uh, you're putting out. So hopefully this is going to be similar to what I'm used to with the uh, Taipei, where it allows you to just put that filament in and it automatically just goes to town with uh, the new color. And you can see that just a massive difference in them. All right, guys. So this is going to be the extruder part. Um, before I had gold, and I replaced it with the. Uh, it's like a lime green to yellow, however you want to consider it. It's not extremely different in colors, but it should be enough where you can see the difference. So right now, just to see how, how long it'll take to switch colors. I'm gonna extrude it through the uh, computer. I'm not gonna do it hand. Serious heat blowing off right there. I have it at 240 Celsius as well, just to let you know. Mm. Looks like the colors are already changing it. We're shooting at 12, we're stepping down to 5 and see if that makes a pretty big difference. Sorry for the, uh, the audio too, so I'm kind of a good distance away. We're going to lower this some more. That's at 5. 
and that there you go the colors changed so let's go ahead and zoom out you can actually kind of see it overfilled but now I'm gonna grab it shouldn't be too hot and show you how much of a difference so before when you had the green the the wooden system it wouldn't make that big of a wouldn't make that big of a change it would have taken a whole lot longer when you stepped on the brightness on this flashlight so it's still kind of hard to see so I went from gold to yellow and that was actually pretty quick so that's that's awesome it means that uh, it doesn't have that massive change where it had before so switching over is a breeze as opposed to what it was before